right hey everybody uh so today uh what we're going to be doing is uh cross hauling some popper logs uh they're all 12 footers big long ones uh and i haven't cross hauled in a little while so i wanted to take a little time and uh do some cross hauling and on these 12 foot logs they're a little they're easier but they're harder uh <laughs> for one they're popper so they're long and straight you know good and straight logs which makes it easier uh the longer logs make it easier on one hand because they're longer and they fit the bunks better. The bad part is they're longer. <laughs> so you gotta get them up toward the front just right and you can't get them too far. So you'll see me a couple times have to turn around and pull the log back a little bit with the mules uh, to keep it from getting up too far. Cause if you don't and you start going down a hill and holding back with the mules, uh, the logs will run up and bump the mules in the butt. Uh, so you don't want that. But anyway, y'all, I've got this video, it's pretty long, I know. But I've got it broke up into chapters so y'all can go through and see uh, different things. We're going to get two loads out today, two loads of popper. Uh, and I just want y'all to have plenty of time to see the mules and how this wagon works. And there's going to be a couple places in there toward somewhere in the middle. And on the second load, I explain more about what we're doing. And I'm going to try to have those uh, broke up into those chapters where you can go through and see. Uh, so that way, you know, any of you that want to skip around, I understand. I know it's a... Uh, a long video uh but i hope uh that you can find this video entertaining useful and if for nothing else just come and hang out and enjoy the peace and quiet of the woods anyway thank y'all for watching and everything you do for us and i hope you enjoy it now y'all what we're doing here today is what we call hubbing uh hubbing these logs up on the log wagon uh because we're not using skid poles uh we're just going to use a cross haul chain let it reel it up on the wagon now, one thing I am going to have to do when I get the mules hooked here, I'm going to have to take my PV and pin the back wheel with the PV and hold my foot against it to keep the wagon from sliding over. Now, the wagon is kind of going uphill just a little bit. Uh, this is a pretty decent size popper. Not real big, but decent. Uh, but I'm going to have to pin that wheel and hold it to keep from dragging the wagon sideways while I'm loading, if that makes any sense. Now y'all, I've been having people ask me about this wagon, the cross haul part of it. Uh, so I'm gonna try to just take a quick minute and show you just a little bit about it. All right, here's the blocks that keeps the logs on. There's a chain that I've got attached under there, under that log, it's just bolted to the middle of the frame. There's one on this side and one on that side. That chain just sets down in that slot right there. So you pull that chain up and that block will slide out. You can slide that block wherever you want it on the front rail and there's one on the back rail uh now here's my cross haul chain that's the ones that we'll hook to the mules and then let me show you all the bed chain here's the bed chain uh right here that's it and it is attached right there in the middle See it right there? And it comes and lays in that little old slot. Now this chain is for your block, but this block ain't in, see? There's a block right there. Okay, and the rear block's off too, obviously, because we're loading logs. Uh, right now, my bed chain, my front bed chain, I've just got hooked to that rear block chain, okay? Now I've got another chain, a rear bed chain that comes off and it's piled up right here. 
but I'm not going to use it till I get my second layer on and I'll show you all that in a minute. Now y'all see how I'm stabbing that PB in the ground there? I've had a couple of people tell me that their people uh, called them cant hooks instead of PBs. Well y'all, there's a difference in a cant hook and a PB. A PB has got a metal point on the end of it and you can use it to prize logs, uh, stick it in the ground, you know, use it to pin the wagon wheel like I did there a while ago. Uh, it's got that sharpened point on it and that defines it as a PB. Now a cant hook, does not have a sharp point on the end. It's just a piece of wood with a uh, strap around it and a hook on it that you can use to roll logs with. Uh, it's used a lot around sawmills, especially rolling cants over, uh, hence where it got its name from, and also uh, just rolling logs around on the uh, sawmill deck. Uh, now here I'm going to let my blocks out just a little bit to where whenever uh, we hub this second log up on the wagon, it's going to let that first one roll on over and uh, contact the blocks. But you don't want to move them over too soon, y'all, because you can turn the wagon over. I haven't been there and done that. Now see, here's one of those uh, instances where I've got to drag the log back just a little bit. I got it a little too far forward. I try to shoot from a double tree. Uh, I don't want the butt of the log going any further than that double tree up on the wagon. Because if you get it too far forward, what will happen is uh, when you start down a little grade, that wagon will kind of, uh, you know, it'll run up on the mules just a little bit. Uh, and 
as the mules start to hold back, the logs will uh, actually hit them in the butt. So it don't work out too good uh, going any further than that. So that's why I have to scoot them back just a little bit. And I want my loads to look good. You know, take a little pride in it, make them kind of even. You know, a little bit of OCD. <laughs> but anyway... Now right here where I'm at, y'all loading these logs, I'm kind of in a in a bottom, uh, in a little holler. It goes uphill on each side of the wagon here, and uh, the timber is laying perpendicular to the wagon, 90 degrees to it, and that is not very conducive for cross haul logging. You kind of want to go with the trees instead of 90 degrees to them, uh, because then you got to do a lot of turning like I'm doing here. Uh, but again, the way the terrain lays and obstacles and whatnot this is just kind of the way it worked out so we're having to twitch them around uh get them on the wagon and this first load is worse than the second load just because we're right in close to the wagon but the good thing about this is y'all is we're close to the wagon you know my skids wouldn't but you know 20 yards at the most on most of these logs so you can just go get one right after the other and get them on the wagon not wear the mules out and then come out with 500 feet at a time that's pretty nice
All right, now here, y'all, I'm resetting my bed chains. I've got to go up in between the bottom layer, come up over the top of them, and I'll show y'all in detail uh, on the next load exactly what I'm doing here. I'll take y'all in for a, a close-up. Uh, but I did want to let you know what I got going on here. You see how I'm having to unhook, you know, drag it down there past the wagon and unhook and rehook to it, which is not too bad of a deal with these tongs. That's what they're good for. Uh, it's just this kind of a job in particular, and that's why we ground skid and use tongs with this log wagon because the skids are super short, and you can hook up and unhook really quick. Uh, but the way this timber lays, you know, being perpendicular to the wagon, it has made it harder. Uh, it takes just a little bit more time doing it this particular way. Now, if the wagon would have been parallel to the logs, to the trees that were failed, it definitely would have been easier because then you could have bunched it a lot easier without having to do all that turning. But sometimes you just have to go with whatever terrain that you're dealt with at that very moment. 
and y'all sometimes you know you got obstacles in the way where you can't you know it ain't it, it's not conducive to loading uh it's hard to load on a hill for sure you don't want to fool with that if you ain't got to So now we've got the blocks in. We use our cross haul chain to bind it down. I've got my PV on there so we can roll them off at the landing. Stab my axe right in here in the back. And my bed chains are twirled around it. And you, as you can see, our blocks are in on this side. So we're ready to go. I'll see y'all out at the landing and we'll unload them. Now y'all, I want you to notice something here. I tried to roll this top log off to get my bed chains out of the way, but it don't work. See my bed chains just wrapped up in them logs there. And the main reason for that, y'all, is because I loaded from the right side and I should have unloaded from the right side. 
uh, but I've always been used to unloading on the left side, and that's just kind of how I do it. Uh, but I'm going to show y'all how to get them chains out from under. It's not too big a deal. Uh, it's just one of them things. You just kind of deal with it as it comes. And y'all, that's one reason why I love horse and mule logging, uh, because it's a different scenario every day. And uh, what works today best might not work tomorrow best. Uh, you know, to get the most production and not wear your mules out and your horses or whatnot. Uh, you always got to be changing and adapting to do what you got to do to get the production that you need for that day. All right, y'all, I'm going to tell you what I've done so far setting up the wagon. I've got my seat cushion off. It's under the wagon there, so whenever I get ready to go, I can get to it pretty easy. I've got my cross haul chain run across my uh, center pole. It's ready to use. I've got my blocks set right here in the middle, kind of in the middle, on, on this side toward us. Uh, so that way my log don't roll too far over and turn the wagon over. That's crucial that that first log don't come over too far. Okay, so got my PV off. All right, uh, now we're using this front bed chain. Uh, see how it's hooked there in the middle? And again, these block chains, they're hooked in the middle and they just run through that block. So we've got block chains, bed chains, and cross haul chains. It's just all kind of chains. But this is gonna be what we use the load with. And for now, it's gonna hook into our block chain on the rear back here. It'll just hook right there for now. And then later on, when we start our second stack on top, we'll use that one. And I'll show you all that when we get there. Okay, so now I've got the wagon set up uh, to start skidding up here to it. Now we've got to get the mule set up, which all I've got to do is take their single trees off. The stretcher is laying over there on the other side of Kate. And then I'll have to come up here and of course undo their breast chains. But also y'all, I'm going to have to move these spreaders and I'll show y'all. Uh, see, I run my lines through these spreaders and my, my stretchers are narrower than my double trees. So I have to tighten them up a little. And the way you can tighten them up real easy is just move your spreaders from the hammer ring to the spreader ring up top. Now that's gonna draw them in together a little, tighten them up a little. So they'll be on that, uh, they'll be even on this here stretcher. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we're starting a brand new load here. And I want to talk a little bit about what kind of logs you want to pick out. Because there is a little bit of method to the madness on how you want to load this wagon. Uh, you want to put bigger logs on the outside, small ones in the middle. And that kind of gives them a cradle uh, for those middle logs when you start up on your second stack. It gives them a cradle uh, to set in, if that makes any sense. So what we're doing here... Uh, we're getting the second cut out of this popper because the butt cut's an eight foot log and I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. Although the butt log is bigger in diameter, uh, we're gonna get this second cut and bring it up here. And on this second load here, we're a little bit further from the wagon. So my turning around and getting everything lined up for the wagon is a little bit easier uh, just because I got a little bit more room. Uh, on the last tree, it was laying right behind the wagon, so it was a little more crowded as far as getting it up there to it. And again, we weren't uh, parallel to the tree. We're perpendicular to it, so that makes it a little more challenging. But anyway, I want y'all to pay attention as we pick out these logs. Again, the first log is going to be a bigger log. Uh, then your second log needs to be smaller, and then your third log needs to be bigger. And then on top, it don't really matter about the top logs. You can put you know, big logs or small logs. You just kind of look, got to look at the hole that you got and fill the gap, if that makes any sense.
Now on this first log, on this second load, I decided not to pin the wagon wheel with the PV. Uh, it's a little bit smaller log, and last time it went really good. It didn't try to scoot the wagon uh, with a bigger log, so this time I felt like I didn't need it and I didn't use it. But if you was loading, you know, heavier type timber uh, or bigger logs, you definitely want to pin that wagon wheel. Now, y'all, you can see just how quick of a turnaround it is from the time I unhook my cross haul chain until I get up there and have another log up here at the wagon ready to go on. It's pretty quick. And uh, if I was more efficient at this wagon, it would be even faster. Uh, Lord, I could have saved myself a good five or ten minutes uh, today just not having to drag these logs back, you know, for me not stopping them where I should have. And uh, being a good driver and having good steady animals really helps on this log wagon, I tell you. Uh, I'm not bragging on myself or my mules, but I am proud of my mules. They do a real good job, uh, but definitely on these wagons, they got to be pretty steady uh, to do it and do it easy.
Now, y'all, I have to say, uh, I like hubbing these logs up on the wagon a lot more than I do using skid poles. It's quicker, it's easier to get the chain in and out from under it, uh, and to me, it's just a better way of doing it. Now, if you got really, really big timber that's really heavy, uh, it definitely will help the animals to have skid poles on there. It kind of just, you know, won't be quite as hard of a pull initially, uh, but y'all, I can't tell you how much this wagon has helped my mules. Uh, as far as their pulling and their abilities, uh, I really appreciate it. And my buddy Jeff Fergie over in Somerville, Tennessee, and John Walker, uh, they've been big helps to me, uh, both of them. And uh, y'all, you can follow John on YouTube. Uh, go look up uh, Down the Trail Horse Logging, and uh, you can see some of what they do over there in Somerville, Tennessee. And uh, they're good people. And I believe you'll enjoy it. So y'all go show them some love sometime if you get a chance.
Before I get too far gone, I'm gonna show you how I wrap my bed chain. See my bed chain is tied under there with a shackle. Now I've got it coming up between that log and that log and over the top. Okay. Then it goes over here and it hooks into my back bed chain, which we didn't use before, but now we are. And you can see how it's hooked down under there. And I've got it run up between those two logs. Uh, now I'm going to have to put my axe right over there to use as a scotch to hopefully keep the top logs from rolling plumb off. Uh, sometimes even with an axe, it don't help. But anyway, I've got my bed chain run down here. All I got to do is roll my log over, fine center, hook my cross haul chain, and we're ready to roll. I just wanted to show y'all what I'm, what I'm doing. Now, y'all, if you'll look over in the corner of the screen, uh, my man Skyler has come down to visit with me. Uh, he got off at lunchtime today. Uh, he's working in town now. Uh, but he got off at lunchtime today, and he came down to check on me and just see what I had going on. And uh, it's been nice getting to see him. So, Skyler, I appreciate you dropping by, my man.
All right, y'all, I'm gonna kind of go through what I did here. One thing I haven't done, I need to. Let me get right here. Remember, we gotta move these line spreaders. Widen them back out on the wagon. Our single trees, they just come loose from the stretcher and then hook right on our double tree on the wagon, so it ain't a big deal. Cross haul chain is used for binder chain. I think y'all can make heads of that pretty easy. And then back here on the back, we just run our bed chains up to our axe, wrap it up, put our PV on the load, and we're ready to go. All right, y'all, we're done for today, and uh, it has been a tiresome day. I got going at 4 o'clock this morning, and uh, it's been a long, long day for me and the mules, too. Uh, I think we got out somewhere a little over 3,000 board feet, which is uh, about, if I remember right, I think it was seven wagon loads. Uh, we're trying to get around 500 on the wagon at a time. Uh, is what we're shooting for. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less. But 500 feet is uh, what we've been shooting for. Uh, but anyway, it's been a day. <laughs> it's been a day for all of us. And uh, I just want to tell you I appreciate you watching and uh, hanging out with us. And uh, if you need me, my email, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Y'all know what to do. Just holler at me. And uh, again, as always, if you're hearing me, I'm going to be praying for you. Thank y'all for everything that you do for us, for watching our videos and help push them along and comment and all that good stuff. I appreciate it. All the new subscribers, likes, comments, everything. Y'all, I'm thankful. I wouldn't have a YouTube if it wasn't for you. And thank you very much, friends. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day, and I'll see you next time.